The story of Mike Johnson is a story of a collaborator and of someone who knew then and knows now that what he's doing and saying is wrong, but he's willing to do it uh, in an effort to please Donald Trump. And that's, that's what makes it dangerous. The Speaker of the House is a collaborator to overthrow the last election. Absolutely. Liz Cheney in her signature clarity reminding every last one of us of the specific role that the current Speaker of the House played in trying to overturn our democracy and upend the American experiment. The big lie really was Mike Johnson's breakout moment in the MAGA Congress. The New York Times called Johnson, quote, the most important architect of the Electoral College objections in the House aimed at keeping Trump in office after he lost. We point this out today because today NBC News is reporting that Johnson and Trump will be holding a joint news conference on, wait for it, the subject of election integrity down at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. Joining our coverage, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitale. Basil still with us. So, Ali, what's this about? Well, look, the idea that he's going down to Mar-a-Lago, Nicole, as it's been explained to me and some of my colleagues, is that it might be more about mitigating this motion to vacate threat from Marjorie Taylor Greene than it actually is about the underlying issue of election integrity. And I take your point on the irony of that being the topic of discussion on Friday, given the way that we were talking about Mike Johnson right as he was being elected to the speakership, where we were talking about the fact that he was one of the key architects in getting House Republicans on board with a plan that would overturn the election results in four key swing states that had gone to Joe Biden in the 2020 election. Now, you might be wondering why I'm standing in the hallway of doom, as I like to call it, because this is where I spent a lot of time when, John, when Johnson's predecessor, McCarthy, was being ousted from his job and all of the other people were trying to succeed him in that role. That is not quite what is happening here, but it is certainly the thing that hangs over the negotiations that House Republicans are doing in the in the room behind me right now. Technically, and I'm going to keep peering behind me just in case the speaker himself actually makes an appearance, but technically, Nicole, what they're talking about here is the failure of the FISA reform, the foreign security uh, reform piece about data privacy and the ways in which the government can surveil foreign adversaries. I'm watching as, as more lawmakers come out who voted against that. But the reason that FISA being stopped on the House floor today is so significant is because it is yet another reminder of the ways that Johnson's Republican conference control him on doing the basic business of the day. Mm. FISA reform was one of the key things that a lot of Republicans actually wanted to do. Now, the fact that it failed on the floor, a rule, not the actual vote on FISA, but the rule failed on the floor, that's just the procedural motion to get onto the actual vote on the thing they're trying to vote for. Those rule failures really don't happen or didn't until the McCarthy and now Johnson era. And it's a reminder of the morass that is happening here mm -hmm. in Congress with this House Republican majority. The inability to govern is central, and it's partly why we're going to see Johnson go down to Mar-a-Lago two days from now. Well, and, and I guess the connection between the two stories, Allie, is that, you know, we've got RF. K's campaign saying it out loud, so I'll say it out loud. The, the strategy that, yeah. that Trump is drawn to, one of them, is to have the whole thing thrown into chaos and to turn it over to what you just described as a morass. It looks like Johnson is all too willing to, and I'll quote Liz Cheney here, enable that. Yeah, well, chaos is a ladder, I think, as Game of Thrones used to say. And I think there are House Republicans who used to and who have benefited off of that line of thinking. I mean, the fact that you saw Congressman Matt Gates be able to oust with the help of several of his other colleagues, then Speaker McCarthy. Now you've ushered in the era of Speaker Johnson. And frankly, it's the same, same, but different. It's the idea that any one topic can trigger any one disgruntled House Republican to oust oust the speaker from their job. Here's what's different about this one, though, Nicole. The fact that Ukraine aid is the thing that triggered Marjorie Taylor Greene to actually launch a motion to vacate is important, because as I've talked to some House Republicans, including, for example, uh, Adam Smith, who's one of the ranking members here on the Foreign Affairs Committee, he said that him and some of his colleagues would be willing to come to the aid of Speaker Johnson if it meant getting a vote and passing Ukraine aid. 
fine. But Republicans and Johnson know this well, that if Democrats are the ones who are helping you keep your job, that's not going to solve any of your problems in the near or long term. And that's, again, the conundrum that the speaker finds himself in. You've got Democrats who might be willing to work with him, but that doesn't work within his own party. Well, Basil, it doesn't work until you're willing to do this thing that has become a bumper sticker, but used to actually sort of govern people like John McCain, put the country over your party. Well, love Ali's Game of Thrones reference, uh, which is absolutely <laughs> right. And, you know, listen, it, it, I, I am completely convinced that this is only an opportunity for Johnson to try to shield himself from the attacks of Marjorie Taylor Greene. But make no mistake about it, he is going to Mar-a-Lago, which is the scene of a in criminal investigation. Why would you do that if you are Speaker of the United so States Congress? But what I what I will also have to sort of imagine is going to happen down there is that Donald Trump's going to set the rules of engagement, meaning he's going to tell Speaker Johnson, this is what I need to, you to do to get me to win. So I think we all need to be prepared for that, because if we can consider what kind of instructions or signals he may give to judges, potential jurors, potential witnesses, why would not we? Why would we not think that that's also happening with with Mike Johnson? Oh, we know it. Meeting. I mean, we know in the that's, transcripts that have been developed by by through the January sixth investigation, right. he called DOJ and said, "Just declare it corrupt, and I'll have my our accomplices do the rest." Well, Mike Johnson is one of those, in Trump's words, and, our accomplices. And we got to expect that that's going to happen going forward. Still more, uh, both collusion and interference, and just uh, fraudulent activity to try to turn an election. Hey, everyone. Everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.